Hello guys, I hope you are doing okay. I myself am fine and we're all grateful to God. Now, on to the issue of the day. In my opinion, Raila Odinga has very limited options moving forward. Reason being, the total tally shows that William Ruto has already won. And the numbers are bare to see. They are all on the IEBC platform. So all this chaos you're seeing at Bombers of Kenya cannot change anything. I believe the numbers are there to stay. That is what Wafula Chebukati is going to use. And in fact, the presiding officer, or rather the returning officer, uploads the Form 34A to the server, which is open to you and me. You can even see those results up to your, the very polling station that you voted from. Now, where we are having issues, you're seeing in Bombers of Kenya guys are fighting and whatnot. They're arguing about the Form 34B. Now, Afula Chebukati made it very clear. In the event there is a discrepancy, there is a difference in numbers or tally, they will resolve to using the Form 34A as the finality. Just listen to this. All the Form 34As that, that we are going to use are in the public portal. Those are the results. Those results cannot be changed. The results at polling station are final. And nobody can change those results. Even if there's a mistake as a commission, we shall just note the error and keep error form. And in the event of uh, any dispute, we shall submit that error form to get the results to the Supreme Court. So let's understand each other from there. So now that we have that out of the way, what three options does Ray Laudinga have moving forward? That's what I'd like us to go through today. Now, option number one, Honorable Raila Odinga could go to the Supreme Court. It's his democratic right. Now, on the Supreme Court, here's what we know about that court. It is packed with pro-Azimio justices. How do we know this? In 2017, they nullified the results in favor of Raila Odinga, and we had to go for a rerun. And you'll come to realize that it's the very same justices. The only person who left was Maraga, and he was replaced by Martha Koome, a Uhuru Kenyatta appointee. So if Raila goes to this court, it's looking good for him. But despite the justices being pro Azimio, in my opinion, Azimio does not have a solid case before this courtroom. Remember, in 2017, the accusation was the servers are hidden, they are abroad, and they cannot be scrutinized. In 2022, even I was shocked. I did not know this up until the time of election. All the data is available to everyone, to the locals, to the election officials, to the international observers. If you have a cousin in US or Canada or China, even they, so long as they have internet, they can see how you voted up to the polling station. So anyone can do the math. And those figures is what KTN is using, Citizen is using, NTV is using, Nation is using, all these media houses are using, including the, the math gurus that we have, they're tabulating the data from there. So even when you see the difference in numbers, it doesn't really matter. Perhaps someone is just being biased, an attacker hands in a kurazam to flani to paint a certain narrative that they are ahead. But all in all, 2 plus 3 is 5, 1 plus 4 is 5. The final tally cannot be different. In fact, this is what the final vote will look like. Just, there should be something on your screen right now. But, Azimio has one of the best lawyers in this country. The likes of James Orengo, Otiende Omolo. If these guys go to court for you, you can even commit mass murder and they can still get you out. They are really good. So let's give them the benefit of a doubt that they go there... Uh, for litigation and they win the the case and we are forced to go for a re-election in 60 or 90 days thereabouts. What will be the likely outcome? Now, based on what I saw in 2017, usually the party that had won prior to the nullification is more incentivized to come out in numbers. If there was a 70% turnout within those ranks, this time around you are sure you'll get 95 and the party that has lost, but has won the case and the uh, election has been nullified, despite the nullification, they never ever seem to have the, the, uh, the charisma and everything required to just come out and vote. Even those who vote decide to stay home because they're like, we voted, they stole, they'll steal again. That's the narrative. So a re-election would lead to the very same results, 
but a much greater landslide. You'll find that William Ruto will still win, but by a greater, greater margin because his numbers will increase and the other guys will not turn up. It will be a little bit less. So that's the kind of thing that will happen in that scenario. Now, the second option that Raila Odinga has is to concede. All right? Like U.S. presidents do prior to Donald Trump, every other president, once they lose, they call the other guy, hello, uh, I am conceding and congratulations, we will support you and all the best. In case you ever need anything, I'm always available. You know, just, just to make it cordial. Now, this would be the better option because it will make transition easy. It will ensure there's no fracas in the streets. Those who want to go to school on Monday or whenever, those who are teachers, those who are hustlers, you, you'll be able to go and do your daily hustle if Reloadinga picks such a path. And in my opinion, this is the best option. I think you'd all agree. And it will set a very good precedent so that even the next time in 2027, whoever will compete with, uh, with Ruto, they will also follow suit because Kenya will have opened a new chapter. Now, the third option, which in my opinion is very, very dangerous, but it seems it could be the most likely option. The third option would be manufacturing violence with the hope or the target of Nusum Kate, having a share in government. Now, how can one achieve this? There's a number of ways. Number one is posturing as a victor before the final tally has been announced, during the announcement of the final tally and the winner, and even after. You insist you've won before, during, and after you've had all the facts. Remember, this time it's not about what Wafula Chebukati does. The numbers are there and numbers don't lie. If you couldn't add the Form 34A, the Form 34Bs are less. Even you can do it with a calculator. And I've seen this with Martha Karua at KICC. She claimed that if she could call the election, she would say they are the victors. Just watch this. It is exhausting, but let your mind recharge because we've got more work to do. And for all of you, because you are in Nairobi, we need to distribute ourselves to the various places where our strength is needed to guard our win because we have won. When I last counted, even if it improves, it will not come anywhere near what we have. So even without anybody telling you the numbers, with those numbers of members of parliament, of governors, of senators, senators we have 23, they, ha they are one up. But if you look at everything, including um, all the other seats combined, there is no way, no way, the tally can be against us. So does that look like somebody who is going to say, I accept we lost? I doubt it. So the Azimio group is very likely to reject the results that Wafula Chebukati will ultimately give. Now the second way they can achieve this Nusumkate is to fabricate or magnify rigging claims to rile up the masses. Now, one thing I'll always tell you guys, rigging will never fail to be there. It's, it's just a matter of statistics. Even if you come from a big family with 30 children, one of you, Lazma Atakuwa Mkora, it's just a matter of uh, numbers. So in all these 40,000 polling stations, I'm expecting there was some monkey business in quite a few. But the steps that Wafula Chebukati and his team have placed today, as far as this election is concerned, there is no avenue to conduct a mass rigging to the extent that there's two million mysterious voters or you subvert the votes of one to magnify the votes of another, that kind of thing, it's not possible. The only place you can do monkey business, it's at the polling station, and in any case, you had an agent there. Once the Form 34A is uploaded without a complaint from your agent, then it means uh, everything was well. The complaint can't come after. This is part of the roadmap or the plan to achieve Nusumkate or something along those lines.
The third way that one can achieve Nusu Mkate is by bringing the country to a standstill through maandamano and things of that nature. You'll come to realize if there's maandamano in town, CBD, you cannot go there to, to hustle. You cannot go there if you're going to school. You know, some people have to pass through Kencom, Ndoyeleke, Westlands, or somewhere, you know. So the entire country will be crippled. Even supplies, no one will do a supply run. You'll be with your lorry, unapata roadblock, your tires, you are stopped, they damage your goods and whatnot. So everything will be on a standstill. And usually most incumbents will be desperate to get the country rolling once more. And they usually compromise with handshakes and things like those. But William Ruto promised that <laughs> that is not going to be the case with him. In fact, it would be better if you just heard from him yourself. Just watch this. Nituko tayari? Na nimewambia tayari. Mwaka huu, hakuna kungwa reli. Na hakuna kutupa mawe. Na hakuna maandamano. Na hakuna kujiapisha. Tunamalizana na mutu, anafunga, buga, 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 mpaka bondo. Ayende hapo muzike. I would really love to know what you think about all this. So just comment below. Uh, let's share opinions. You know, we're just sharing opinions. It's nothing major. Perhaps you have a better visualization of the entire scope of what's happening. So I'm really eager to hear. Now, before I close this video and I go have breakfast, I'm super starving. Uh, I would just like to add you just... Take your time, subscribe to my channel at David Wafula on YouTube. If by any chance you're watching from a different platform, because I did come to realize that, oh, there are guys who will download the video and go post it on their Facebook page, which I have no problem with. Use at your discretion. So if you're watching from a different platform, just head on over to YouTube, search for David Wafula and subscribe there. We'll be covering more videos like this on a daily, on a daily, that I promise during and even after this election. So I'm um, do have yourselves a great day. Adios.